Why are you speaking? 9.11 per share. All this has been disclosed, but I'm reiterating that so that there's full clarity on what's happened. Uh, we've started the bank with 23 branches. As we said, 15 in rural Madhya Pradesh in three districts, <coughs> um, Hoshangabad, Khandwa, and Harda. And the remaining eight branches are corporate branches, which are in the four metros, as well as in uh, tier one cities like Pune, Hyderabad, uh, Ahmedabad, and Bangalore. So those are the uh, eight corporate branches, 15 rural branches. Um, now coming to IDFC Limited, and obviously as of 30th September, uh, IDFC Bank was not launched. So uh, IDFC Limited in its, uh, in its original form as an NBFC and an infrastructure finance company continued till 30th of September. After 1st of October, obviously there's been a demerger. And so going forward, IDFC Limited will be a holding company and IDFC Bank will, uh, will list on the 6th of November. <coughs> and so uh, from the following quarter, we will have two listed entities, IDFC Limited as well as IDFC Bank will be two listed entities. Now for the first half financials, again, uh, you know, this should come as no surprise to, uh, to anyone who's been following what we've been saying for a few quarters now that we will make adequate provisions as we transition to a bank. And we had in fact uh, indicated in our uh, last, co last quarter's conference call as well that there were certain 45 IC non-distributable reserves that we were going to use uh, to increase our provisions to the order of 2,500 crores. We had made that disclosure in the last quarter itself. Uh, what you find uh, in this quarter's financial statements is that provision has actually been made which means that we have transferred 2,500 crores that existed in 45 IC non-distributable reserves to provisions for loans. We have obviously routed that through uh, the profit and loss account because that is the appropriate way of accounting for, uh, for such uh, reversals uh, or transfers from one reserve to another. And therefore, what you find is that the first half uh, has, has a loss uh, of uh, approximately 1,215 crores. Uh, adjusted for this exceptional provision, obviously it would have been uh, a profit. So that is something that you all should keep in mind, that this is an exceptional provision that has been made, as we have been saying for some time. And uh, excluding that, if you were to look at our operating results, our profit before tax is more or less flat, uh, or actually up 1%. If you were to adjust for these exceptional provisions, uh, so the operating profit is not uh, is not materially different first half of this year versus first half of next year. You should also know that bank-related expenses are substantially higher in this first half versus the first half of last year, as you would expect. Uh, first half of last year, bank-related expenses were approximately 38 crores. This this first half, it is approximately 250 crores. That is something you would expect because this was the last six months before we operationalized the bank versus the first half of last year, which was almost 18 months away from launching the bank. So there are certain things in this first half that are not normal operating uh, items for IDFC, uh, which are exceptional in nature, which you need to adjust for in terms of trying to understand the results of this year, of first half this year versus first half last year. Having made those comments, I think if I were to just walk through the results for IDFC Limited for first half, balance sheet size on September 30th was approximately 77,000 crores, which is a 3% year-on-year decrease. Um, gross loan book uh, was approximately 47,000 crores, and uh, that is a, a decline from the first half of last year, or even if you look at March 15, where we ended the year at approximately 54,000 crores. That is largely to do with uh, some large prepayments in the telecom sector, approximately 5,000 crores. And that is on account of you know, rates having come off and uh, the financing available to high quality telecom companies in the bond market being exceedingly attractive. So this is not unique to us. Uh, the entire consortium has got uh, repaid or prepaid. Uh, we happen to be part of that consortium. As you know, we had exposure to very high quality telecom companies with rates coming off. Uh, the bond market is providing very attractive rates to high quality companies. <coughs> Non-interest income for first half was uh, about a 10% decline. Uh, average spreads uh, for the rolling 12-month period uh, were about 1.3%. 
NIMS for rolling 12 month period were about 3.9%, uh, sorry, 3.1%. Uh, gross NPLs uh, were at 3.2%. Net NPLs were at 1%, which was the same as uh, the previous quarter. Uh, so there's no increase in net NPLs. And uh, uh, our uh, average assets under management were about 70,000 crores when you put together uh, the various uh, businesses that we have. Broadly, uh, I would say the results, if you were to normalize for the exceptional items, is more or less a flat result. I said PBT on an operating basis, adjusting for bank expenses and other exceptional provisions that I've mentioned, is up about 1%. Uh, I think as we transition to a bank, um, obviously the bank is starting off on a very solid footing. As we said, we will um, make sure that the balance sheet is protected against all known risks that is behind us with the 2500 crore uh, 45 IC provision that we said we would be making and therefore uh, the bank balance sheet uh, uh, has adequate provisions for all the risks that we are aware of and on a conservative basis as we've said uh, this more this more than takes care of uh, anything that we can see uh, in terms of um, asset quality issues that exist on our balance sheet we have done a lot more than what is required by regulation as we have pointed out earlier uh, if we had to just stick to regulatory provisions, we would have had to make no incremental provisions. We have gone beyond that because the risks that we see surrounding certain gas and power-based assets, unless we have a visible solution, we thought it prudent to make uh, additional provisions so that going forward there is no overhang from an asset quality issue or any overhang from a provisioning issue for risks that we are already aware of that exist on our balance sheet. So what we will now have to do is obviously monitor these assets going forward and hopefully there will be write backs as assets get resolved <coughs> to the PNL uh, and the profit and loss account of the bank uh, as some of these assets get resolved over time. Um, that's broadly what I would uh, like to say in terms of opening remarks and the results for IDFC Limited as well as what has transpired in the last six months in terms of operationalizing the bank. Uh, Sunil, I don't know whether you want to add anything. No, we'll take questions. Happy to take questions. Uh, on the provisions for this quarter, which is 262 crores, could you tell us what was the general provision, uh, loan loss provision? Uh, the 2639? No, she's uh, talking for about. The yeah, for the quarter, we made uh, 2639 crores. 2500. 2500 and another 139, which is over and above the 2500 pertained only to the interest income reversal of uh, these uh, stressed assets. This is not required regulatorily. That's why it's qualified as exceptional items. But the underlying philosophy is very solid. That if we are making 2,500 crores of provisions against certain assets, then to recognize income, we should be prudent. And from an income recognition perspective, we have said that we will recognize income only on receipt of cash. That means on realization rather than accruing it and then not receiving the same. 